All right, now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough grind. But we're going to have a show. Albert, you are back. Welcome, sir. I am excited Albert, thank you. as the producer and the commissioner wearing both hats. You can also check on my Truth Social stock. How is it doing, Albert? Am I richer today than I was yesterday? I'm hoping you see for the job security, yes. I am excited about the Trump madness that has gripped this country. It is crazy. People cannot get enough of that truth social. They want to get that DJT in their account. Wow. So if we can exploit these, some would call them, uh, well, devotees of the former president, as they run that stock up, I say, you know, Trump mania. Exactly. Thank you. John Slade. Very well put. Welcome. Today we've got John Rothman, the uh, award-winning political historian and guy whose podcast is extremely popular. We exploit him once a week on Wednesdays. And David Katz, the former federal prosecutor, joins us to start off the second hour. Wow, there's a lot going on. And I don't need to tell you, we had our closest showdown in Mark's Madness that we've seen. In fact... I checked the standings at midnight last night, Albert, because it was that close. Well, uh, yesterday it was um, it was Larry King, right? Was that what it was going down? Well, well yeah, the, the, the matchup you're referring to was the Larry King versus Oprah what? That's right. Larry King was the... Is the what can you tell us about the scene? Yeah, what can you tell us about the scene? And Oprah's what? What? And it was absolutely, Kim, it was a dead heat into the night. Kim, how are you? And what I saw last night, Albert, is that what did prevail in a oh, very yeah, close during contest. During the live vote yesterday, uh, Larry King was actually in a very, very slightest, had the slightest of leads. And then the, the community vote, which is that means that it's important to go to the community tab on our page. That was the vote that actually won Oprah's yeah, what? In after the hours voting. Right. Well, you're hearing now and seeing now if you're watching and listening. You, this is the live vote that you can be part of. But the community channel, the community part of our Mark Thompson Show channel is where that last contest was decided. And it's likely to be the place where other contests are decided. So, yeah, um, wire. It really was a prop one finish. It was, it yeah. was a prop one finish. Yeah. And today, no. I can't believe it. Mark's Madness. It is on, baby. It is on. Hour one brings in a favorite. How about this? Why are you yelling? Oh, why are you yelling going up against? What the hell is going oh, on in the United no. States of America? Oh, it is. Why are you yelling? Why are you yelling? Versus Ron. What the hell is going on in the United States of America? Vote now live in the chat. And you can vote till midnight tonight in the community section of our YouTube channel. Wow. I mean, Albert, you've got this... the why are you yelling on the wine? The why are you yelling on the, you know, don't we have it on a mug? Of course, so, we got it I on mean, a mug. But um, why are you that yelling doesn't... is like a hallmark of the show. Of course. I don't know but, how you uh, vote against why are you yelling. Well, I'll tell you how. You just uh, punch you just what, what the hell's going the on in the United one, States yeah. of America. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I mean, the I hell see... is going on in the United States of America? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, why are you yelling? I don't know. Uh, look, after yesterday's Larry King, I didn't think that was even going to be close. And Larry King almost bumped off what? I mean, it was what? I was I mean, getting the Mark Thompson treatment, the the old uh, whatever we like, let's vote against. That's exactly I, right. The commission yeah. is right about that. So because at least right now, uh, Ron is in the has the slightest of leads. <laughs> Unbelievable! So I know everyone. Loves what the him. hell is going on in the United States of America? Exactly, That's Ronnie. Good. And it's good to hear his voice. Mugs. It's a it's a former champion. It it won this yeah. tournament. That's before. right. Why are you yelling? Oh my God! Anyway, it, look, it's a it's a wild place. This is a new America, you know. <laughs> it's um, anyway, uh, good stuff from uh, from the commission. Great to have him back. 
He's been monitoring the uh, standings, which I think is worth looking Albert, at. Thank Maybe, you. Albert, uh, we can. You should. I yeah, I do suggest checking it today. There has been a shakeup. So, uh, oh, Jennifer's well, been number you... one this whole time. She got bumped to uh, in a group of uh, still still doing very well, but yeah, in a group of uh, a little lower in total points now. So, who is on the leaderboard as uh, is there one leader now or not? There are so Matt and Nancy are vo both number one and two, and in close like in very like, they're tied for first. Close second is oh, wow. who actually shares a household with you, Mark. Uh, Courtney is actually in the hunt. What? Uh, that what? is extraordinary. Well, I'll tell you that Courtney looked with great interest at the outcome of yesterday's showdown. That's all I always say. She really did. Um. And this from Lulu Lancaster. Big shout Big out. Big shout out. This is a super sticker and super chat. This is a super chat, but I was going to say super sticker and super chat. Watch live when Kim coined chit, chit, chit. And I just about spit out my coffee. Chit, chit, chit for the win. Big shout out. It was Look, a moment, Lulu. It was a moment there. Yeah. Chit, chit, chit is. Chit, chit, chit. Um, is a favorite to take the whole tournament. It's actually I true. We'll um, I I believe that there's a very good chance that Chit 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 could take the whole thing. Vilma says I like Ron more than yelling. Oh. Sorry, Mark. Well, darn, I mean, it's fine with me. What the hell is going on in the United States of America? Yeah, that's going up this hour. Against, why are you yelling? Why are you yelling? So, um, but thank you for the uh, for the twenty, Lulu. You rock. And I thought I saw somebody early this morning. Oh, here you go. Trevor Starr in Hollywood, greetings from Barstow. Big shout out to Barstow Big shout out. in the desert of California. My son just turned 21, hey, so we're birthday. on our way to Vegas to play 21. Mark, what should we bet at the roulette table? Well, you know, if I advise you, it is the blind leading the blind. I'll tell you, I do not. I had the one great roulette story, you know, I mentioned to you where I was going to go to sleep, and there's a roulette table right there on the way to the elevators, and I stopped, and I told you that story where I, I had a thousand dollars, and I, I bet a hundred on, on the on red, and it rolled black, and then I bet uh, another hundred on red, and it rolled black, and then I rolled, then I bet two hundred on red, and it rolled black. There's never been this anything is, like this. Yeah, this is crazy. And I'm looking at the guy, the dealer, or croupier, whatever they call him, the guy who spins the ball. Right. And he's just kind of going, yeah. and so then I, then I bet, I believe like 300 thinking it's got to roll red and uh, it rolled double zero, <laughs> uh, which is neither red nor black. And then I took the last few uh, chips and I put them on, was it 35, I think 33. 32 and 34 what they were all red numbers i thought it was 35 or 34 and um and i looked at the i said do you think i should change the strategy and the dealer guy said he said go with your gut man go with your gut <laughs> and because I, it was, I had no more money i just well, sure. you know torched a thousand dollars and it was like my budget for the weekend yeah and it rolled 32 bam paid uh, and I, so I made $300 on that entire thing. Wow. And then I went to bed. <laughs> so, uh, I would, my advice to you, Trevor star is to get lucky because that's <laughs> the only way to make it work. But, uh, congratulations to your son and happy birthday to your son. Yay. And, uh, what a cool dad to take care of your son to Las Vegas. I and mean, that's a very, um, good morning to all from Stan Pollock, CPA, my favorite CPA. What's up, Stan? Big, Big shout, shout out. Yeah. Big shout out. Thank you for a 15er. Mm -hmm. And a, just a good morning to all, he says. Wow. We've had a, um, uh, a great morning so far. There's a lot going on, and we'll get to a bunch of it with um, Ron, uh, I'm Ron, with uh, John Rothman. I'm looking for something else, even as I'm talking to you. Vivian El Shawa with a 10 spot. Big shout out. Big shout out. Yeah. yeah. Love my Vivian. Man. Well, thank you for being here, everybody. We've got a lot to get to, and uh, we'll get to it now. So. The Mark Thompson Show. I um, have the most serious stuff, and I have the wildest stuff. So it's all here in this show. I hope we get uh, to it. I will tell you 
that one of the questions that is asked is, could what happened with the bridge failure and the bridge coming down in Maryland, could that happen in California? And the actual truth in a sentence is, it is much less likely to happen in California, even as we have way more boat traffic, as you know, and shipping traffic in California. But that Francis Scott Key Bridge had almost no chance of survival. It didn't have the support structures and impact barriers that we have in our bridges around California, just to state it bluntly. And so typically we have solid supports in California, substantial buffers that are there, and there is protection from collision, even a big collision of the sort that we saw in Baltimore. The There are two things that have happened since the Baltimore thing, just to step out and speak to some of the commentary on it, which has been ridiculous. I don't know if you've seen the you know, right-wing media outlets start talking about, they jumped right on terrorism. This is what happens under Joe Biden. And um, they even talked about you know, wokeism. I saw this. A commentator saying it's wokeism that has created an environment by which they hire people who are not, uh, and then they, he says that are not necessarily qualified. He said, I'm not saying that that's what happened here, oh. but I'm just saying that's a real problem. And I'm thinking, wow, what a pivot that is. Who hires so, people that aren't qualified? Exactly. The, Plus, the people it, driving the boat? Like, there's no evidence yeah. yet of any sort that would point to that being the issue. Now, it is true, and we told you yesterday, that the boat had other problems. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in Antwerp, I believe there, they, there was a huge amount of damage to the boat in Antwerp as a result of an accident. But there's no evidence that it was a result of any kind of, you know, uh, hiring action that was like, anyway, but that's the kind of crap that's out there. Albert, didn't I send you something uh, uh, when Maria Bartiromo, who is just, you know, crazy, uh, she has drunk the Kool-Aid, remixed it, and drunk more. Listen to what she says as she, the information is coming in on Fox News about the bridge going down. We're all worried about a potential on whatever's most. There are no oh, indications uh... of foul play here. Uh, of course, we're no. all worried about a potential, you know, terrorist attack, uh, given the, the the wide open border. You know, I'm no expert on what's going on on the seas, but all I would say is is that hmm. uh, if you talk to employers in America, they'll tell you that uh, filling slots with employees who aren't drug adled is a very huge problems. And what are we doing to make sure that we have the best infrastructure in the world so that when a, a ship this is great, by, it you, flips the you can stop this, uh, Albert, you can stop it here, because one of the things that's pointed to is somehow this is an infrastructure breakdown. Uh, but that's not what this is. There's no indication again, that this was an infrastructure issue. The bridge didn't spontaneously come down. It was hit by this immense cargo ship. So, again, now back to California. Uh, Typically, container ships can access the port of L.A., the port of Long Beach, without ever going under a bridge, said a spokesperson for the Southern California um, International uh, Gateway Bridge Office. The California port with the most similarities, though still not really a comparison, would be the port of Oakland. Most large ships have to navigate under the Golden Gate Bridge, of course, and the Bay Bridge. And the Bay Bridge has more of those supports under it across the bay. But it also has all that baffling. You know, uh, Kim, mm-hmm. you you know about the Golden Gate Bridge baffling. You know about the uh, the Bay Bridge baffling. I've heard you speak about it before. Yeah, they're and, big fenders. They're big fenders. Right. And they, um, in some cases, in the Bay Bridge case, it it goes down to the um to where the bottom of the ship would go and so when they hit the fender which is um concrete and then sand inside of it like one of those uh sand barrels on the freeway it'll wreck the fender but it's not touching the bridge and that's yeah, what happens here are in california designed, mm-hmm. right to dissipate that energy so by right. you know it, it really is uh like the shocks on a car or like the fenders on a car so we have a different setup in California. 
Uh, look, in 07, there was a huge accident. Uh, a, a, a ship did hit the Bay Bridge in the San Francisco Bay Area. It spilled a bunch Costco of oil. Bus- the Costco Busan oil tanker. Thank it you. It was an m- absolute nightmare. There was wildlife affected, birds washing up all around the Bay Area. That was horrible. Yeah, and that, the nightmare that Kim's talking about was the result of the oil spill because it was an oil tanker, but it wasn't the result of the bridge going down or the bridge being yep. damaged or closed in any way. So... Again, when you look at infrastructure, I always say, well, uh, you guys talk about infrastructure, GOP, but you don't actually do anything about infrastructure. I mean, couldn't get an infrastructure package passed. Even your last president, who you, who you served up, Donald Trump, he talked a good game, said he had an infrastructure package ready to go, but that's not the package that was passed legislatively. The package that was passed legislatively was what? tax cuts. Hmm. And then the infrastructure package never came until Joe Biden came along. And look, I'm not leading the parade for Joe Biden, but I sure am relative to the choice of Donald Trump. My God. And and he did, you know, get that legislation passed. But more to the point, this accident had nothing to do with an infrastructure failure. So the short answer to the questions as to how we would do is we would do better on the West Coast. Um, there is on the West Coast, the Golden Gate Bridge, they say, has the most robust ship yeah. collision protection of any bridge on the West Coast. And do you know they built it like that in 1937? It was state of the art technology. And still to this day, it remains state of the art technology. It's as good today as it was back then. And it's very protective of, of our bridge. There's yeah. basically a moat or buffer zone around the South Tower Pier. That barrier protects an area the size of a football field with a bumper made of concrete and filled with sand. That's what we're talking about, that kind of Mm -hmm. shock absorber quality. But in any case, uh, we feel for those workers who lost their lives in that accident. But as to whether or not it would happen on the West Coast, it seems as though a scenario like that is less likely. So. The Mark Thompson Show. Albert, can we do a chunk of Trump? I wonder if I can do a, a quick chunk of Trump with that uh, story that I sent you. The um, Hey, look, every everybody needs a side hustle. And Donald Trump's side hustle is he's pitching these Bibles. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, look, he pitched the steak. He pitched the shoes, the sneakers. He's pitched... You know, why not pitch something? That, this is a word from the Lord, and he's no. not happy. Well, I don't know. I don't know if he's happy or not. But is, um, Does it have enough gold leaf to be like a real Trump Bible? Because uh, it, it's got to have a lot of gold packing the punch there. That's the point. Yeah. yeah. Put this in the shrine you have to the former <laughs> president. We all know he was the best president ever. And why not buy a Bible and add it to the other Trump memorabilia that already festoons your home. There's never been anything like this. Albert, run a little bit of uh, our, what's happening in Trump land, including the Bible. He's now selling Bibles. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. It's a lot of people's oh favorite God. book. Trump has at various points said his favorite books are his own. But after hawking everything from sneakers to steak, he's now offering the fifty nine ninety nine God Bless the USA Bible that includes text of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. This is a license. Oh, that's deal. good. Is- <laughs> <laughs> make America pray. Come on, where's a little applause for that? He just comes up with it. The guy's a genius. God. He just comes up with it. Make America pray again. Wow. Good stuff. It's 60 bucks plus shipping and handling. And uh, the Bi- is the Bible printed upside down? Yeah, he did um, He did hold that Bible up the wrong way the, the, uh, for the he's, photo op. Good point. He's partnering with this, with the country star lee greenwood oh yeah the the guy who sings the big america patriotism drama sure thing and so they're they're hooking up together it's the god bless america bible right on the cover damn straight man yeah get that get that bible you start slam out a little bible verse then you you turn it over to that constitution you slam out a couple of those amendments 
you know, before you know it, your family will be looking for ways to move to another neighborhood. That's the Mark Thompson Show. It was great. I loved it. How would you handle this? We could try ignoring it, sir. Morning. You cannot say you love your country. Where are my weed smokers at? Stay at home and get baked. I promised you that we'd have an expert in or someone who can speak uh, quite um, both candidly and with firsthand experience about Robert Kennedy Jr.'s running mate. And that person, I think, will be in tomorrow. So I wanted to let you know that. Now, someone who can just speak to the third party candidacies uh, through history is a uh, a renowned expert on that, and he's coming up next. That's John Rothman. He's just a terrific political historian and presidential historian. Uh, I have Kim's news as well, but before I get to that, I really wanted to... Um, the Mark Thompson Show. I share with you that the um, Supreme Court is active and taking up some highly consequential cases as they do, but they're taking them up with a political and religious bias that we have now seen come out of the weeds and create a clear and present danger, in my view. So mefepristone, the availability of this uh, abortion pill and the rollback of its availability is before the court now. I talked a little bit about this yesterday, but all I'm doing now is letting you know if you have an interest in this, and you should, uh, we'll talk a little bit about it with David Katz, who's coming up, the former federal prosecutor and legal analyst is coming up uh, top of the second hour. So you got Rothman, you got Katz, and now a little something about America's favorite pastime, and that is the Mark Thompson Show. Going to Costco. Oh yeah. If you like going to Costco, and then I know you do, I know you do. I mean, who doesn't love Costco? Exactly. Diamonds, tires, everything in bulk. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing in that place. They don't. Right. You, you, you could want that they don't have. That's true. There's yeah. never been anything like well, this. Well, it is pretty pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what has happened to Costco is that Costco has set up an insanely popular thing that everybody loves and almost reveres at Costco, and it's not the tires, and it's not the televisions and it's not the stacks of t-shirts that you can buy or the barbecue sets Is it's it cheap, the, cheap lunch it's right it's yeah. the food court there you go yeah it's the outdoor food court where and else can you get a hot dog and a soda for a dollar fifty in america thank you that's exactly yeah. it mm -hmm. and so that place has really become emblematic of costco i have never heard of something like that well you haven't been to costco then because they are everywhere with the dollar 50 soda and hot dog yeah. now effective april 8th and you've probably seen these signs if you've gone to costco you will not have the privilege of eating in the food court and ordering anything in the food court and getting the dollar 50 hot dog and soda unless you are a member of Costco. What? Yes, many people are snoring. They are not members, but they're going by there and getting the buck and a half hot dog and soda, and Costco's had enough of it. Good day, sir! That's right. Should we ding you for snoring? Is that a real word? I've not heard it. It's, yeah, a snore is kind of somebody's trying to get something for free or, yeah, I, I don't think it's. You it get doesn't. nothing! You get nothing if you're not a member of Costco. So they point out, welcome to Costco. You need to be a member if you want anything from the food court. And hey, good news. You can join today. Please see our membership <laughs> counter for details. For the low, low price of only $59.99. It is uh, more expensive, Kim, than a Trump mm. Bible. I think that mm. uh, you can get a Trump Bible for slightly less, although I don't know what the shipping and handling is. It's a gift that keeps on giving, though. I mean, you can get good stuff at Costco. Mm. Mm. Actually, Costco offers two membership tiers. The basic is $60, so you actually yeah. can get a Costco membership instead of a Trump Bible, yeah. uh, and you'll do it for less money. That gets you access to the store, certainly to the food court. It gets you, um, uh, you know, 
you can get all those discounts. Now, there is a $120 executive membership, which gets you 2% cash back on all your purchases. But more to the point, I thought it interesting that they are cracking down. April 8th is your cutoff, everybody, if you've been kind of going in and sort of floating without a real membership. But here's a question for all of you. What percentage of Costco's profit, what percentage comes from membership? What percentage of Costco's profit comes from membership? It has to be lower than purchases because, I mean, I don't know, people, everyone I know when they walk into Costco, it's over two or $300 when you walk out. That's well more than the membership. Mm. So it's, it's got to be higher than, it's got to be higher. The, the purchases have to be higher. So do you want to give me a percentage? You want to put some percentages up there? Or you are putting percentages up there. Thank you. I'm going to say 30%. Mm. 30%. Let's see 20, what else people are. 28. What percentage of Costco's profits come from membership fees? Jason says 4%. Wow, he went low. William Martinez is 11%. There were a couple of others. Debbie's 21%. 30% says Walter in Hawaii. The actual Gail Guthrie, HOF, says 65%, getting warmer. 80% is right from N Stars. 80% it comes from membership? Actually, only 72%. Can I take that away? Uh, Albert, how do, I don't know. How do we handle that? Uh, we'll handle that in post uh, show. So 80% is close, and I think uh, somebody else also guessed uh, around 76% or whatever. So the okay. answer is. Um, 72 percent so higher than i thought it would be yeah, yeah. those memberships uh, represent a real source of profit for that chain costco that's why they want everybody to be incentivized in some way to be members and that dollar 50 thing the dollar 50 hot dog and soda that is emblematic it is a brand it do, they are very much aware of the fact that with everything going up in price that they've maintained that low price and it's an extraordinary thing that does bring people in so and that reminds me of this story of um the costco's co-founder told that uh told the company's <laughs> ceo that he'd kill him if he ever raised that costco price of the hot dog so, uh, same with the rotisserie chicken they know it brings people in so they just sell them at a loss to make money on other things. Sure, it's a loss Kim, how leader. Are you? Exactly, a loss yeah. leader. Ricky O'Bear says the same thing. It's a loss leader. Um, it's uh, and it uh, it works. It works. So, uh, smash the like button smash like a it boss with your iron rod. We are in the middle of a hot Mark's madness. Uh, Albert, maybe you can put no. up the um, Mark's madness. Maybe you can put up the leaderboard right now, Albert. Maybe you can put up the leaderboard, Albert. Uh, the, uh, I put up the, oh, there's the leaderboard. That's right. I should watch what I say. Um, there is the actual leaderboard. This hour, we've got, why are you yelling? Why are you yelling? Going up against. What the hell is going on in the United States of America? You can America? only vote for one. Only one goes on to the next round. You can vote till midnight tonight. So good luck. And that leaderboard, maybe you, you grabbed a glimpse of it. It has shuffled since. A couple of days ago, the top of the leaderboard, you can see, is inhabited by who? Let me see who's on the yeah, top Yeah, it's Matt the... on there. It's pretty small. Matt. Let me just okay. increase the size of this. Yeah, Matt. Matt and then Nancy and then Courtney. Courtney's yeah. right, right up Courtney, there. Courtney, nice job. Yeah, Matt is 18 Daniel. and 2. So is Nancy. And Courtney is 17 and 3. Wow. Do you have to give her a present if she wins? Uh, I think just being with me is a big present. Don't you um, agree? What? Not enough. <laughs> no. Absolutely not enough. All right. No. I'll, uh, I'll take it under I mean, uh, I'm not saying you're not Kim, great you? in everything. All right. Yeah. All right. But to have a supportive partner like that that listens to the show and participates She doesn't and votes. listen to the show. She sure just she is, does. She's got a bracket. What? That's all. She's I mean, even you don't have to on the, the show. show. She's a oh guest. She's a God. listener. She's a supporter. Oh, my God. Please, just Kim. Think it's don't. Don't. For a gift. Please, like Kim. Maybe jewelry or oh something. Oh, my 
God, this is just Insane. Albert. I mean, I don't understand. No, it. no, no. <laughs> okay, let's do not know she, what you are talking about. Uh, yeah. She takes down all of Mark's madness. It's you know, you got to step up. That would be just the coolest thing, though. Yeah. yeah. But she's in the hunt. All right, uh, Kim's news, and then the great John Rothman next. The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister, and this report sponsored by Coachella Valley Coffee.com. It's a little, I didn't realize how late it is. We'll have to do kind of a turbo news. If oh, you okay, mind. I'll just give you the highlights. There are yeah, emergency workers are being praised for potentially saving dozens of lives after that bridge collapse in Baltimore you were talking about. It's what uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg told reporters today during an update on that ship crashing into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Six construction workers are presumed dead as recovery efforts are back on. But the police got to the bridge really quickly and held traffic, or that could have been a lot worse. A Texas law that would allow police to arrest people suspected of illegally crossing the border, it's still on hold. The Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans upheld a lower court decision that found SB4 unconstitutional, so arguments are expected in that case next week. The governor and the mouse are calling a truce in the Sunshine State, the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District, announcing Disney and a board spearheaded by the Florida Governor Ron DeSantis uh, have agreed to a settlement aimed at ending all lawsuits against each other. The legal dispute started a couple years ago when Disney criticized a Florida education law known as the Don't Say Gay Bill, and then all bets were off. Lawyers for President Biden's son are headed back to federal court today in Los Angeles. Hunter Biden's attorneys are arguing to have a tax-related charge dismissed. Uh, Hunter Biden had pleaded not guilty to nine charges. And lastly, customers might start referring to the Dollar Tree as a few dollars more tree. The discount retailer announcing during an earnings call prices will start at a dollar fifty, and the higher end of prices will be seven dollars. Seven dollars. That's not a Dollar Tree. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. False advertising. They're going to get sued. Dollar Tree reportedly implemented a $5 price cap in June of 2023, according to Yahoo Finance. Uh, this report is sponsored by CoachellaValleyCoffee.com, where you get the finest espresso, the finest tea, which I have in my mug today. And it's all 10% off for you, the loyal Mark Thompson Show listener. If you just enter Mark T when you get to the cart area at checkout, Mark T, that'll get you your 10% off. And then the good stuff arrives on your porch, and it's a happy, happy day. It is. I'm, yeah. I'm right Kim on. McAllister. This is The Mark Thompson Show. They had to close down an entire radio station to silence him. And now he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Thompson. The Mark Thompson Show. Thompson. Joe Box and Little Anthony. Mo Black's brother, Fat Andy. Morning. There's a reason that this place is fun. I'm not gonna cry! I'm not gonna cry! Y'all can all go to hell and I'm going back to Texas. My bad. I'm sorry. And I wanted to apologize to the Asian community, the Asian American community. We've never seen anything like it before. Have you ever seen anything like this? There is nothing in our history that quite compares to this. Nobody has ever put something like this together that I've ever seen. There's never been anything like this. Why are you yelling? Good day, sir. Seriously, what the? Thanks for being here, everybody. It is a Wednesdays that we look forward to on this show because our former colleague and student of presidential and uh, international American history comes through when it comes to politics. He really is top of the heap. His show, he does a podcast that's daily offered 
is uh, called Around the Political World with John Rothman. And he's John Rothman. Hi, John. Good morning, Mark. And I uh, agree John with is, Kim. Yeah. I'm, I know I'm risking yeah. my position on this show, but Courtney <laughs> deserves Courtney deserves great accolades. Oh, uh, well, uh, accolades is a ding word. I, um, uh, I would listen to me. <laughs> I don't want to hear you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she is doing very, very well, which is impressive in uh, Mark's madness. We'll update that a uh, little before the top of the hour. Now, John, uh, look, I- I've read a lot about different issues that are influencing, uh, the American public in polling and the disposition toward um, the current president, Joe Biden, the disposition toward the former president, uh, Donald Trump. I'm wondering, uh, and I really want, wanted to ask you this for some time, uh, you know, you're such a student of political history. What issues actually land? And also, if is there a new arithmetic as to what issues land for political uh, aspirants like uh, Biden and Trump, or are the same issues that would land with people 40 years ago still landing with people today? No, it's new issues. I mean, Ukraine, Gaza, completely new. The question of uh, the Supreme Court and whether or not people will be able to take a pill to have an abortion, relatively new. Uh, you know, they're recurring undercurrents. But I think the issues uh, are completely dynamic, and you can see that now uh, in the fact that I have a list here of at least 20 different topics we could discuss today. So you have topics, but it feels to me like, especially if I see these Trump voters, and they're, um, you know, the 30% diehards and then another 10% who are just kind of a GOPers being pulled along in the whitewater uh Mm-hmm. rafting trip that is politics. Uh, wait, wait, Whitewater was Bill Clinton. Wait. <laughs> uh, but people, it seems, vote with their gut. I think they do, but they also vote on the cumulative record. Uh, I think Donald Trump is digging a hole that is rather deep. And, and we don't know yet what is going to happen on the immunity case before the Supreme Court And let me just tell you, that is going to be a real teller, because if the Supreme Court affirms the principle that a president is above the law, the whole dynamic changes. And then again, if the court says Donald Trump is subject to everything else, he's not above the law, again, it changes. And look, all I can tell you is on this question of a woman's right to choose, that is the issue. I was sitting next to a woman yesterday at a luncheon who said to me, John, in my opinion, that is the major issue. Will a woman control her own body? And I remarked, if somebody tried to tell me what to do with my body, uh, I can't say on uh, public airwaves what I would respond, but you can just imagine. Well, it's interesting that you point to this because uh, on the one hand, just on the specifics, and we are going to talk to David Katz, the former federal prosecutor, who can speak to the Methapristone questions that even the court is having right now, which are associated with standing. That is the connection that a plaintiff has to a legal action. But- uh, Uh, More to the point, just in general, the Supreme Court uh, took the opportunity to throw Roe over and then throw the issue of abortion back to the states. But now, because there is a pending effort to get rid of mefepristone, which has become sort of the choice for many women, since a lot of the other choices are slowly being closed off, the problem comes as to the Fed's now intervening with our lives nationwide. It's not being thrown back to the states. The feds are getting very much involved. And that that's the key, because uh, this is a question of individual responsibility. Let me point out in Alabama, the state legislature just tipped from being controlled by uh, Republicans to Democrats by one vote, one victory, over the issue of a woman's right to choose. I, I do not believe people understand the depth of the passion about this issue. And I've said it before, I think I said it uh, with you uh, months and months ago, this is going to be a major issue in the campaign. There are some realities, sadly, John, if you're a Democrat, uh, it's possible and probably likely that you'll take back the House uh, for many of the reasons um, that you've described, that women are going to come out probably in big numbers, and there there are also many House seats uh, that are up. Um, The Senate, not such a... uh, pretty picture for the Democrats. They may actually lose the Senate. It depends who the Republicans nominate. Uh, They just had a nominee selected who is a Trumpist, 100%, uh, in one particular state. Uh, 
I, I think all bets are off, Mark. And you and I are going to be following this, monitoring it very carefully. And if I want to pray on it, maybe I'll spend fifty nine ninety nine for a Trump Bible. There's no bottom to Trump. There's no bottom to his rhetoric. There's no bottom to his side hustle. There's no bottom to the fleecing that he embarks upon. He's the Elmer story. Gantry of American politics. Now tell everybody who Elmer Gantry was. Elmer Gantry, the novel and the film, is about a preacher who who rips everybody off. In fact, when Trump first announced on, on Dear Old KGO, I played the music of Elmer Gantry from the movie starring Burt Lancaster because it fit exactly. This is the ultimate huckster. But his chickens are coming home to roost, if I may be so bold as to say it. He has immeasurable problems which are going to grow. Uh, and I think one of the most interesting things was Mike Pence this last week. You and I haven't spoken since Mike Pence announced that he will not vote for Donald Trump in 2024. Uh, I'm waiting for Mike Pence to be put on the stand under oath because he's an honest man and he'll tell the truth. <clears throat> and if that happens, Donald Trump is in deep, deep trouble about January 6th. Well, I mean, it's uh, it seems clear based on the constellation of testimony that, you know, Trump was very much involved and aware of what would likely happen on January 6th. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and don't don't forget the Stormy Daniels case, which most people relegate to the uh, dark corners of political scandal, uh, that Donald Trump played a direct role. Uh, Michael Cohen, uh, who may be a convicted felon, but who, in fact, was the man who set everything up. These are all people that are going to be on the stand. And look, I don't know how the election will turn out 100%. But I can tell you what I really believe. You summed it up. You said 30% of people will vote for Trump no matter what. 10% are on the fence. You can't be elected president with 40 to 45% of the vote. It just isn't going to happen. Well, uh, let me. Can I say a word about Robert Kennedy? I'm well, I was fascinated. just about to say you can, actually, if uh, Robert Kennedy gets in as well, a third party. Well, he's in, and, is and the relevant. question is his running mate. And I spoke this morning about the fact, other than the fact that she, uh, uh, through marriage and divorce, is a billionaire. Uh, she had no qualifications to be vice president of the United States. And if you believe that the first critical decision a candidate for president makes is who his running mate is going to be, Bobby Kennedy Jr. just failed dramatically, which is not to say she's not a decent, honorable person, but she has no background in international relations. You don't know where she stands on any issue. All we know is that she has a child with autism and that uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr., she believes, I guess, in, in Bobby Kennedy's uh, theories that uh, vaccinations cause autism. I mean, I'm assuming that. But whatever the case may be, uh, this is going to be a fascinating moment. Uh, but going back to Mike Pence, just watch. Just watch. Because if he turns on the president, uh, that is going to be really something. And for all intents I don't know. It wasn't yeah. a big deal when he decided not to uh, endorse the president. It, that that story lasted about 11 hours. I mean, it's crazy yes. now. It, yeah, it, but it, you, you understand, know. and everybody needs to understand, he was an eyewitness to what happened on January 6th. You put him on the stand under oath. The one thing you can say about Mike Pence, whether you like him or not, <laughs> he's an honest man. You he had you had truth. credible witnesses in that J6 uh a hearing to begin with, John. You know, you there had Cassie Hutch hearing, Cassidy right. Hutchinson was under oath and she had damning testimony. And I again I, yes, I'm not saying it, it didn't land. But... It was a congressional hearing. Okay. Here you're talking about guilt or innocence by a jury of peers. Okay. And what the evidence will be. And I want to come back to the fact the most important uh, decision the court will make is on the question of presidential immunity. If he doesn't have immunity, this thing is wide open. Uh, and, well, we'll see what happens. The more interesting question, Mark, if I may be so bold, is what happens if Trump implodes before the convention? Uh, and that's the reason Mike Pence and Ron DeSantis and uh, and uh, all the others are suspending their candidacy right. so that they can be eligible. Well, that's their that's their long shot. That's their lottery ticket. Uh, there's no sign that he's going to be imploding. I mean, you know, this guy is... Uh, He's taking incoming legal fire like crazy, and it doesn't seem to affect his standing in the polls. In fact, so far, he, he seems to get stronger. It's I, not I the go... polls, Mark. It's not. Yeah. He's already won the nomination if if he's still standing when the when the nomination is made. Right. It has to do with the judgment of the American people following legal decisions. And the polls indicate 
that about 30% of Americans, if he's really convicted of something, will not vote for him. And that's the end of his candidacy. Well, you know what I say about 30% of the Americans? There's always been in this country 30 <laughs> to 35% idiots. <laughs> yeah, so those yeah, are They wouldn't the, be idiots if they didn't vote for him. Would you I agree get on it. that? They, well, I get it. But I'm, I, I think the many are saying, and the group that says, I wouldn't vote for him if he were convicted of something, I think that group says that on the spot. And like so many polls and so much, so much man on the street stuff, when the reality rolls around, they'll, they'll punch the, but neither one of us can know. Uh, they'll can, punch can him for Trump. spend a moment on the holy trinity of democratic politics? Kim McAllister alluded to the breaking news today that Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, and Joe Biden, uh, three democratic presidents, uh, are going to gang up, if you will, to present the Democratic case. And I would also remind you of another very significant thing. Biden and Harris are campaigning together. Uh, and one of the reasons they're doing that is to boost Harris's stock. So my my suggestion is we have a long way to go until November. Sure, sure. Uh, and it, it's a fair point. Uh, you know, on Harris, uh, you get this uh, from a, Harris is not a great speaker, often don't know what she's saying. I don't know about that. I don't think that. I mean, you can say what no, you want. No, she's actually um, very articulate. I've interviewed I, her. I agree. I, I, you, you can you can ding her or, or you know, um, bang on her in certain ways, criticize her, but I don't think you can speak, criticize the way she speaks. I think she but speaks very vice well. Presidents. Every yeah. vice president becomes a whipping person right. because uh, there's no accountability for a vice president. A vice president is the servant of a president, pure and simple. Uh, you know, Trump, this is interesting from Norm. I mean, it's a good, Trump seems to be guilty. Why is it taking so long to try him? We'll talk to David Katz about that. But it is true, John, that he's winning the essential delay tactic plan. He's No, I winning. don't think so. April 12th, he is going to, uh, there's going to be a jury select. April 15th, rather. There's going to be a jury selected. And uh, I think if the Supreme Court rules, as I think they will, he may face the music dealing with January 6th sooner rather than later. It took a long time to get Richard Nixon. Let me remind everybody. The Watergate break-in was uh, June 17th, 1972. Nixon did not resign until August 9th, 1974. And I want to remind people there were no real court cases involved. But this had to do, in the end, with Congress coming to a conclusion. This is a completely different It also situation. had to do with the, his own party coming to him essentially and saying, Mr. President, I think you should step down. Once, right? once, the, once the tape was revealed, the smoking gun tape, it was over. And Nixon knew it. Everybody knew it. And look, eventually, that's the key with Donald Trump. When will people understand this guy is a huckster uh, and a dangerous huckster to boot? Go ahead, Kim. Do you think, you guys, that Donald Trump wants to be thrown in to jail and for contempt of court because here's what the story says that less than a day less than 24 hours after a judge puts a gag order on him he has verbally attacked that judge's daughter on a post on social media. It's like, you're doing what? Do you, I mean, maybe it's a publicity stunt because he wants to get thrown in the slammer for a few hours. I don't know. But he went on to um, social media and he said that the um, judge is suffering from an acute case of Trump derangement syndrome. His daughter represents pick a politician, um, and just posted a picture of me behind bars. Her obvious goal makes it completely impossible for me to get a fair trial. And on and on he went. Just after the judge said, don't do this. Yeah, well, that's Donald Trump. And he is going to continue to do it. It appeals to his base. But these things catch up. It may take a while, but it's going to catch up on Donald Trump. I believe in the American system. And if, if Donald Trump is able to prevail... It'll be a tremendous blow, in my judgment, this is just one person's opinion, uh, to the American system. Uh, I'll ask uh, David Katz about that, the former federal prosecutor, so we'll get uh, another opinion. Uh, as you know, I do not have the faith in the American system that John Rothman does. In fact, I think the, the American system is effed up. I'll say it straight up. In fact, you can start with the Electoral College because you know as well as I do, John, that we wouldn't be sweating Donald Trump winning. In fact, he will probably lose by 10 million votes, but he could still win the presidency because of how effed up our system is. And you know it. And you, you, you don't hide from me, John Rothman. I know you know it. 
Listen, I look at the last election. I saw what happened in the last election, and I saw Donald Trump go down to defeat because swing states wouldn't vote for him. Donald Trump keeps talking. He's going to dig his own hole. I have great faith in that. And we've just seen it in Alabama. You just saw it in Alabama where the Republicans were defeated. The Democrats now control the legislature by one vote, but they control it. And I want to just point out to you, that's what matters. You have to have faith in the American people. If you don't, where are we? Uh, Sandy says, I used to have faith in our system before Trump came along and changed everything for the worst. Well, he's but he hasn't changed it. He he's has changed not the political. Changed. I think it's a fair point, uh, uh, John. I'm going to interrupt, but I'll, and I'll shut up real quick. Oh, sorry, but no, no. Be, be I, I do. I want to. Make, he has changed the nature of the debate and the dialogue and the issues around the the whole idea that you could serve up BS as a short order chef the way Donald Trump does and get away with it and actually seize a narrative through media like Fox News. I think that has changed a, a, a lot of what's going on right now in America. I won't disagree with you, but I will tell you that I believe we will rise above it. We have to rise above it as a nation. Uh, I have to believe, because of my own sense of security in the United States of America, that the American people will rise to the occasion. And not only that, I think our legal system is going to rise to the occasion as well. I think Donald Trump is in big legal trouble. There's no question about it. And we just have to see how it plays out, Mark. Uh, but just the on the legal truth. legal point, I get this. I lost my faith with Kavanaugh. I mean, the, the legal system has been hijacked as well, John. It's 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 hijacked by um, doctrinaire, uh, theologically informed uh, I wouldn't disagree with you, but look at what's going to happen with the Supreme Court on immunity. Look what they're going to do on this abortion issue. The court has demonstrated, and I think it's it's an interesting point, there are two members of the court who I don't trust at all, Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito. The other members of the court seem to want to be reasonable. And the most important thing is Justice Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts, who clearly doesn't want the Roberts court to go down in history as the court which blew American democracy. So, you know, I, I know it's, it's, it's purely hypothetical, purely hypothetical. There's no way to determine today who's right or wrong. But I believe that in November, Mark, you and I will have this conversation and either I will be pulling out my hair, because, what little I have, because I will be so upset or you will be saying, John, thank God you were right. Yeah, One way no, I mean, I, look, I'm, I'm here to pro, you know, provide oftentimes the pushback, which I think you know, just makes for a healthy debate or dialogue. But sure I, it does. That's what I, I love. Obviously, we're all we're all hoping for the same thing. So uh, check out his podcast. It is Around the Political World with John Rothman. He is John Rothman, and his podcast is scorchingly hot. So congratulations, yeah, Mark, sir. Mark, may I just point out, there yes. is no litmus test to listen to the Mark Thompson show. Unlike Ron or Romney McDaniel and NBC, on this show, you can have any point of view, you can express your point of view, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly why you should support the Mark Thompson program. Oh, thank you, sir. Actually, we're going to talk about the... Uh, McDaniel thing with David Katz because I want to ask him whether she might have a case for if not wrongful termination they're going to send to give her a check I have a I question think. that you can yeah. ask uh, Katz and that is this is she now a martyr will the fact that she is being dismissed because of her views affect how people view her and what will Donald Trump say will well, Donald that, Trump now, uh, uh, honestly that's now not embrace her yeah, that's not a cat's question because he's a lawyer, but I would, uh, that's actually a question more for you. But what I would say is the cat's question is can she sue after she was pilloried by every anchor on MSNBC and NBC on Meet the Press when they went after her that way? Depends now, on the deal. What's here, the here, but here, let me let me finish, sir. And I will be able Can you to let him finish, sir. Yeah, okay. You think it was uh, your show. I want to make the point that she didn't say anything that you couldn't anticipate she was exactly who she said she was who you knew she was when you hired her yeah. so for that reason if they could possibly with the help of a lawyer pro prove damages of some kind damage to reputation that's what made me think of it when you talk about reputation uh maybe there's a bigger check in her future i guess i'm might, just gonna have it to may listen to the rest of the mark thompson show okay. to find out the answers <laughs> and of course i love you john can listen if they subscribe so please do <laughs> John, thank you. Uh, it is Around the Political World with John Rothman. Thanks, John. See you next week. Bye-bye. The Mark Thompson Show. What's up, Kim? 
I was going to tell you about that uh, Rona, uh, Rona McDaniel situation. They say that she, on Politico, that she signed a two-year contract Two years at three hundred thousand dollars a year, and right. so that NBC is going to have to pay her six hundred thousand dollars to get out of the contract that they signed that they gave her because they're the ones that had a change of heart on this, right? Yeah. It means that that interview that she gave, that was not quite twenty minutes. Cost, oh, they broke it down. How much? Uh, they, how much co- per it minute? Cost yeah. NBC thirty thousand dollars per minute and five hundred bucks a second. It's good work if you can get it. That's right. Uh, I, I, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty wild. I break look, a contract, pay the piper. Again, I think it's provocative more than anything else, maybe. But I want to ask David Katz about: um, Was there anything defamatory said? In other words, they said a lot about her, you know, mm-hmm. but they didn't say anything that wasn't true. So I don't know that she has a case. But then, as John sort of hinted reputationally was she damaged and then is that actionable i mean so what so your reputation was damaged no case kidding it was based on who you are i think oh. it'll be interesting to talk to cats about that they so we'll get say to, that yeah. she's exploring potential defamation and hostile oh, work environment towards. there you go that's exactly oh. what i was saying how about After that they i mean look took turns raking her over the coals on the air yes. not a fan of mcdaniel at all here <laughs> but i'm just saying i try to call it straight like yep. we uh, like we see it so um the mark thompson show what can i tell you albert except for the fact that i'm so excited that you're back as commissioner of mark's madness and I wonder if you could update us, sir, on um, on voting and what's going to happen now. Please. Albert, thank you. Yeah, yeah so it was, looking, um, it was looking like an upset, potentially. Oh, in, um, wait a minute. Uh-oh. An upset? In live voting, anyway. In live voting. It was looking like that, but I think um, as time went on in, in this hour, it, it kind of uh, normalized here. I have the results here for uh, the first hour. We have why are you yelling up uh, just slightly. Why are you yelling? Mm. Yeah. Up over um, uh, what the hell is going on? What the hell is going on in the United States of America? Albert's uh, mic uh, level sounds low to me. Does it sound low to you? Maybe pump yourself up a little bit. I don't know. It's tough, the levels on the, you know, so many different levels. Um, So it's a close one, though, Albert. That's the point. Why are you yelling and what the hell is going on? Very close, yeah. Yeah. Ron was actually in the lead for like a half, like 20, 20 to 25 minutes. And then uh, Why Are You Yelling came storming back here. Wow. Okay, so now we're going to wrap that up and we go to the second hour. Isn't that what happens? That's correct. Um, all right. Well, uh, without any further delay, Kamish, let's do it. Now, I can't believe it. Mark's I Madness. I love it. The second hour in Mark's Madness. It's a classic showdown. It's either... Seriously, what the f***? Or... There's never been anything like this. Oh, it's... Seriously, what the f***? Or... There's never been anything like this. It's seriously or never been. Jump on the vote now live for the next hour right here. After that, you vote in the community section of our YouTube channel. You go to YouTube. It'll say live, videos, shorts, community. Click on community and you can vote there. You can also get, when you vote, the percentages immediately as to who's ahead. So, wow. These are, this is what happens in Mark's Madness. You get classic showdowns like this. It sucks when one of them has to go, but um, it's just yeah. the nature of the tournament. Look, they're not going away. They're just not making it to the next round in the tournament. Uh, David Katz ahead, the former federal prosecutor, is, I believe, waiting now, yeah, right? He's standing by. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's in the uh, green room? Yeah. He's ready. Oh, cool. Then, Kim, you don't mind? I will, uh, we'll yeah. do a turbo newscast at the bottom I, of the hour. That's why I took myself out, because I thought you got to slide right over oh, to You him. took yourself out for that reason? That's I'll, right. get you, I'll get you, darling. All I right. All right. Here we go. The Mark Thompson Show. Uh, he is the former federal prosecutor, and now he works the defense side of the table. Brilliant legal analyst that you can hear him. British broadcasting in New York City. I saw him on Fox 5 in New York in San Francisco, television and radio, and on television and radio in Southern California. Uh, He's even been on Fox News Channel recently. I mean, they use him a lot. So uh, we appreciate his time. He's the great David Katz, everyone. 
Great to be with you. Hello, sir. Uh, David, I want to start with this Ronald McDaniel thing only because we just had it uh, pass through our news desk. And I was making the point before this even percolated to the point that it's now a news story that she might have a case here since she was so savaged by all the anchors on MSNBC and on Meet the Press on NBC. And could she have a case for obviously uh, maybe wrongful termination, but more to the point, the kind of reputational harm that all of those anchors did to her? She now is talking about bringing such a case. Can you speak to the kind of chance that case might have? Well, she was savage. Uh, she was pilloried. Um, she was spoken uh, badly about, uh, but she is a public figure. She was the head until very recently of the Republican National uh, Committee. So this is the, you know, the New York Times um, standard. You know, she would have to show for defamation that they actually knew they were propounding falsehoods or they were indifferent to the fact that there was a likelihood that they were propounding falsehoods. So something, and, something false has to be said for it to really move along as a legit legal case. Yeah, and, and to be defamatory. And, you know, free speech, the idea is that she can defend herself. And by being a public figure, the idea is that she has access to the public um, medium, which she does. Now, apparently, CAA, which was her big booking agency, quit on her, which was, you know, unfortunate timing because you would think she'd be planning a big press counterattack, and maybe she is anyway. But certainly, you know, if I were a producer at, you know, CNN or, or certainly Fox, although Fox is a little fraught because of the whole thing with Trump, but certainly CNN and other uh, media should want to have her on to tell her side of the story. Now, I suspect and she should get her $300,000. They said she was going to get a salary of $300,000 per year, let's say. She's entitled to her $300,000, I would imagine. But what you're talking about, the reputational harm, you know, there's a lot of give and take. Um, you know, one of the things that we've noticed about Trump is look at how much incoming Trump has taken. But there's a lot of outgoing, too. And you can say it actually begins with Trump. There's more outgoing with Trump than there is incoming. But he's a battler. The one thing that's been remarkable about him, uh, no matter how despicable he is in so many ways and so obnoxious and rude, but it's always like, you know, you, you know, you attack him, he attacks you back three times or attacks you three times before you ever attack him. And I don't think that most people have that, even a public figure like Ronna McDaniel, uh, you know, she's from the Romney family and stuff, but it would seem to me she could put on a great counterattack. Now, one thing I have to say is interesting, and this is more political than legal. And I try to stick to my lane of legal. Um, but I've certainly noticed the fact that, you know, people say that um, there are a lot of uh, microaggressions all over. And as you said, Mark, she hasn't suffered a microaggression from the left. She <laughs> suffered a massive uh, incoming, a massive, um, you know, a put down uh, from the left. And as you say, from all of these commentators. Um, and she sort of felt, and this Trump said, now you're in Never Never Land. The idea being that people who say we shouldn't be so polarized, we shouldn't be so cancel culture. We should hear what others have to say. Um, well, they're not very interested in hearing what she has to say, not on any of their news programs, but at the same time, it's their news programs, right? Um, but she's now been in like two weeks, basically fired by Trump and fired by NBC on the, at the behest of the liberal station. So you can see why, you know, she sort of seems like one of these people like Liz Cheney, although Liz Cheney has landed on her feet a lot more but kind of being in what Trump calls a no man's land. You're either on my side or you're over there with the left. And she tried to be, I, you could certainly depict it this way. She tried to sort of be in the middle and she ended up with being no middle, right? Landing uh, landing in quicksand, not landing on that, that island, the islands in the middle that people are always talking about ought to exist and there ought to be not so much polarization. Now, I just do want to put this out. She stayed as the head of the Republican National Committee, not only during the election that Trump lost, but even after it lost. She sent memos about those alternate slates. So from the left wing commentators on MSNBC, their point of view is that we're not canceling her because of her speech. It's because of her actions. From their point of view, it's, you know, it's putting one of the people who, <clears throat> you know, from their point of view, she's lucky not to have been indicted. Uh, up right. there in Michigan. Right. Um, and uh, we don't want to be on uh, TV uh, with somebody like that. So, you know, I, I think that what she needs to do, my legal advice to her, and if she has the grounds to sue, you know, more power to her. This is America. Anybody can sue anybody. Um, 
But I think that what she should try to do is land on her feet. As I say, she's from the Romney um, side. She hasn't been indicted for anything. I think the statute of limitations is run. She should land on her feet, say, I'm a proud person from the middle. I tried to help my party win. Um, and uh, I haven't done anything wrong. And I have a lot of comments on the Trump campaign going forward. I can't believe that CNN or somebody wouldn't give her a big contract. So uh, that's the word on Ronna McDaniel. We'll see what she does. I think you make you know such good points. And it's always important to kind of get the legal reality, which is associated, as you've said, with uh, were there falsehoods perpetuated or in some way? I mean, it doesn't appear, I know that there were uh, there, and also her visibility as a public figure, but it doesn't appear that there were any falsehoods launched. So anyway, we'll watch that with some interest. Uh, speaking of falsehoods, you also mentioned Donald Trump. And uh, of course, this is pretty amazing after a, just getting this gag order in the hush money trial yesterday, he goes after the judge's daughter again today this just broke kim had the update for us on his truth social he came forward with a kim do you have the actual post that he um that he offered he goes up against the judge's daughter again no kim you do not um Murchon's daughter represents crooked joe biden kamala harris adam shifty Schiff, and other radical liberals and has just posted a picture of me behind bars, her obvious goal. Now, that was the original, wasn't that the original? Um, anyway, this this happened while I was on the air, so sorry not to have this, uh, but, but it just happened. Um, we'll get the specifics, but what I want to ask you is, uh, given the fact that he's just had a gag order issued on him, uh, he can come forward less than a day later, say this, and what? He could be jailed, uh, punished in some other way legally. What are the repercussions of Trump doing this? Well, I think that all of these judges are reluctant to use the power of contempt to actually jail Trump. That's certainly what would happen with a normal defendant, even a normal white collar defendant, even a well heeled defendant. Uh, and they'd be smart enough to not make these kind of comments. But Trump obviously is making a different calculus of what the political benefit would be. You know, some Democratic judge jailing him in New York City. He'd probably be in jail for a couple hours. The Secret Service would be all involved. It would be the biggest story in the world. You know, another a, another awful thing like the, that uh, cargo ship hitting that invaluable bridge could happen. And yet Trump being in jail for the day would be the biggest story. And he knows that and he would spin it his way. So given that judges are reluctant to enforce it that way, they could try to fine him, which is another alternative if you're held in contempt. But you know, when he was in the New York civil case where he ended up having to pay $455 million plus interest, I think he was fined for insulting the judge. What was it, Mark, $15,000? That's 0.00000.1. And the publicity alone was worth uh, so much more than that. So I think the judges, you know, and Trump realizes. And of course, you know, it's an interesting question because um, it would seem sort of relevant. I mean, if right now the um, uh, medical abortion case were being handled, you know, by a judge somewhere in the country and his daughter was uh, someone who could be depicted as a right wing anti-choice advocate, I'm sure the press would want to cover that. Um, and so from Trump's point of view, you know, here he is being um, uh, told what to do and having a judge decide his fate. And the judge's daughter works for some left wing organization. That's his depiction. If she really has a photograph of him in jail, I mean, people send those kinds of um, photos back and forth. But, you know, when you're the judge's daughter, I mean, you would think that the judge would admonish her. Look, we're going to be under a lot of scrutiny. That's the way it is. This is the life I chose. This is the honorable profession that I have. And people are going to not only make hay out of what I do, they're going to make hay out of what you do. So try to be really careful. And if she really does collect photos of Trump in jail, um, you know, I, I think that some appellate court is going to say that that may be a fair comment. So um, let me get this straight. He said the judge's daughter is allowed to post pictures of her dream of putting me in jail. The Manhattan D.A. is able to say whatever lies about me that he wants. The judge can violate our laws and constitution at every turn, but I'm not allowed to talk about the attacks against me and the lunatics trying to destroy my life and prevent me from winning the 2024 presidential election, which I am dominating. That's what he wrote. So it's kind of what you're saying, which is, you know, hey, this is uh, it's real. 
you know, he's not saying something that, uh, I mean, he amps it up, he trumpizes it, but uh, anyway, the gag if order. No one, if, if no one's thought of trumpize, Mark, you need to go and patent that right away. <laughs> Um, That's a big word. That's a big word. Trump eyes. Yeah. I mean, he, <laughs> you know, he Trump eyes it. Um, so the gag order that was imposed yesterday doesn't completely limit him from uh, talking about his critics, as you said. And, and so on some level, we can't be triggered by this. Um, but it was specified in the gag order that he's not supposed to talk about the judge's daughter. The judge's daughter is an adult, as you, as everybody knows, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, in the new America where everybody's uh, loaded for bear and you can easily uh, be fearful that somebody look at what happened to those Georgia election workers. I mean, you can be fearful that you, there could actually be some physical harm brought to the family of, uh, of the judge. So it's not, you know, it's not outside the range of possibility. Uh, I want to get to this Mephipristone case. Cause I think it's obviously huge. It's at the Supreme court that almost by definition makes it huge, but it involves women's reproductive choices and an extremely popular way that they deal with a very tough decision. These abortion pills are um, are really what's at at stake here. And I wonder if you could touch on in in discussing this this eighteen. I think it's from the eighteen hundreds. This um, uh, this no mailing of the um, uh, of this. It's still on the. Is it, is it the Crowley Crowley or uh, one of them? Comstock, thank you. Comstock, exactly. The Comstock Act. And it's odd that it's still in effect, technically. But if you could speak to this entire Mephipristone thing and what's going on at the Supreme Court. It's so interesting you mentioned the Comstock Act, because when I was a law clerk to a federal judge in Washington, D.C., the people who make Trojans, I think they're called Young's products, um, they brought a challenge because they weren't allowed to sell condoms through the mail. And my judge decided that it was commercial speech. Um, and that they had a right to engage in that kind of commercial speech. Um, the manufacturers of the Trojan brand did. The case went to the U.S. Supreme Court, and he was affirmed nine zip. Wow. So I think that the Comstock Act, while it may, you know, be on the books, I think it's pretty much limited to, you know, out and out pornography. I think the idea that you can't send anything quote sexual through the mail. I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with whether you can send a Trojan to someone who ordered it through the mail, or in this case, whether you can send these pills. Uh, but to, to be pure people. about it, what you're saying, what David Katz is saying, is what the Comstock Act is, that it, it, it's considered obscene material. And if it's sent through the mail, it is a violation of that act. I think it says something like obscene, sexual, something else. So you can argue that, well, of course, while a condom or a pill, uh, a medical abortion pill, is not obscene, it's sexual, that somehow it's within that definition. But I think that um, my, my judge's case from, from years ago, and I think the precedents since then show that that's not a viable argument. Their argument is that the FDA, their strongest argument and still very, very weak, is that the FDA did not properly vet it. They didn't do the proper procedures. And of course, Big Pharma is in an uproar. And we talked about the fact that this case made its way through the district court and the appellate courts. Mark, we talked about the fact that if you think that if you want to bet whether the U.S. Supreme Court is more theological or more commercially or oriented toward the huge companies, they're going to go with big pharma and they're not going to go with theological in this case. And anyway, their argument is that the FDA didn't properly vet it. The tests weren't good enough. And there's two points at which the FDA vetted it. They vetted it when it first went on the market. That part of the lawsuit seems to be dead, although that judge they went to down in Amarillo would have apparently bought all of their um, you know, fringe arguments. But the second one is that when they test it again so that people can buy it through the mail, they can do it by telemedicine. And this is very important that that wasn't properly done by the FDA. And of course, the counter to that is that if you're going to allow that kind of argument, it's going to keep lots and lots of other drugs off. It's going to keep cancer drugs off the market. And that these huge pharmaceutical companies that they make billions, but they do also spend uh, an awful lot of money developing these drugs. Why would they develop the next wave of miracle drugs and invest that kind of money just to have some judge around the country say the FDA didn't properly approve it, take it off the market, and they will go the investment, they'll go the, the stockholders' money. And so uh, the U.S. Supreme Court, I've always thought, I think you agreed with me, that they were going to go with the FDA and not make that kind of ruling, that they were not going to make that kind of ruling only for this pill because it would apply to so many other pills if the FDA... It really is going to have second guessed 
its scientific expertise uh, by judges all over the country who are not scientists and don't have the expertise. And they may be very smart, but this is no way to run the country. Here, they ran into yet a different problem during the argument, which was standing. And the standing is who's hurt. And a lot of times, you know, is the taxpayer hurt by the fact that they have to pay $20? That's been a big issue, you know, taxpayer standing. But you have to have some kind of standing. You have to have someone who was hurt. The people who are supposedly hurt here that get this case into the courts are seven doctors and dentists. And their argument is that there could be an emergency. Someone could have taken this pill. They could suddenly have a medical emergency. Somebody would be called in to do surgery or do something. And that doctor would be someone who has these um, religious scruples against uh, doing anything that has to do with a person who's taken an abortion pill. And as Justice Kagan said, who's your person? Tell me one person. This is the safest pill in America. I'm going to say it again. This is the safest pill in America, plus it's very effective for women. But there's some incredibly tiny, infinitesimal amount of, uh, there's 13 out of millions of people. It's safer than penicillin. It's safer than any other drug that you can imagine. So number one, the idea that some doctor is going to suddenly have to rush and he's going to be one of the people that the entire country is 13 people with a bad reaction. He's going to be the doctor who has to run in there on an emergency basis for one of those 13 people. And on top of that, they're allowed to opt out. The doctors who truly have a religious objection are already allowed to opt out. So it was pretty clear. Even people like Justice Gorsuch said, this looks like a case with no standing. Now, may, will they find someone in the future with standing and get back to the U.S. Supreme Court in a couple of years? Maybe they will. Maybe we'll have 13 members of the Supreme Court, including four who are brilliant and have common sense who don't buy arguments like this. Maybe they'll no, reverse I'd love, Dobbs. I'd love to see 13. that. I'd, I'd Maybe they'll reverse that. Dobbs if you have 13 on the U.S. Supreme Court. Because as soon as people talked about the horribles that would happen if they reversed Roe v. Wade, they talked about, the you know, well, one of the horribles is that then it'll all be in control of the states. Well, of course, you know, the anti-choice people want to have it both ways. They wanted it to go back to the states, but no, not really. They want to ban it. They want to ban it. And this would, if this got affirmed, and this decision I do not believe will be affirmed, I think that they will they will throw this out. Um, there will be no relief for these seven doctors and dentists who are trying to, to get this relief and have uh, this uh, medical uh, drug taken off the market. Two thirds of the women um, get uh, an abortion uh, by this pill, not other ways. But had they gone the other way from what I think they're going to go, it would have affected blue states. You couldn't have gotten this pill in a blue state. You couldn't have gotten it by telemedicine. You might have to go in and see a doctor. You might have to drive 100 miles, miss a day or two days work in order to do it. Uh, they would have made it incredibly inconvenient, even in blue states. So hopefully that's not going to happen. I think the Supreme Court has got this one right. Yeah, you make uh, a point that I made last hour about uh, the fact that they talk about it wanting to go back to the states and then they make it a federal thing right away. They, it, it's like the next step. But the thing that you uh, mentioned that uh, is really, uh, I think, worth remembering, and I've made this point repeatedly in talking about the, uh, the Supreme Court, and you're so uh, kind to remember that I've made it also, is that this is an insanely business-friendly court. They're looking to help corporate america they're looking to help commercial america that's really where their bread is buttered and you're so smart to point out hey don't forget that pill is made by a big pharmaceutical company and they own this court and that's exactly right i saw a graph uh says beth of deaths contributed to uh by drugs methapristone four per million viagra 20 in a million. <laughs> wow. So that'll give you a sense for, yeah, it's safer than Viagra. Um, really a, a remarkable thing. This is a, uh, Phineas asked this, and I, it's oftentimes something worth uh, checking in on, David Katz. What happened to the separation of church and state? Um, and it does seem as though a lot of these legal decisions are informed more by religious doctrine, or at least uh, with a look back toward religion. Uh, many of the plaintiffs who are trying to get these various uh, legal judgments through, they come from a strong religious background, and they seem to uh, ignore this uh, separation of church and state. Well, the people who like to figure out, you know, political views and stuff like that by looking at the background of, of you know, people, um, you do have to notice um, that the U.S. Supreme Court is surprisingly a Catholic oriented. I think something like six of the Supreme Court justices, six of the nine, went to Catholic schools. Um, 
and I think our, our uh, there, I think Sotomayor is also a Catholic. So you can say, well, you know, it, it, Sotomayor is a Catholic; she votes a certain way. Um, but you know, Alito, Thomas, I think Roberts, um, I think Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, um, I think they, uh, Amy Coney Barrett. Um, I mean, th there are. There are six people, uh, and then you have uh, Sotomayor, and the, the irony is that uh, then you have Kagan, who's Jewish, as RBG was uh, Jewish, and then you have one Protestant. You know, when I went to law school, I think they were just about all Protestants, including Thurgood Marshall. Um, so that's been kind of an interesting thing, and, uh, you know, you have someone like Alito. You know, if he doesn't want people to notice that, then Alito, after he was instrumental in the Dobbs decision, maybe shouldn't have gone to Rome and ballyhooed his decision you know, they used to say about JFK in the 1960 election, will he be controlled by the American people or will he be controlled by the Pope? Uh, he was not controlled by the Pope. I thought he was a terrific president from what I remember of him. I was very young. I want your viewers to remember that when JFK was in there. Um, but I mean, Alito really, you know, sort of played into, he played into that, that narrative. Now, when a case involves something like, you know, a football coach saying a prayer and everyone having to participate in the prayer, that case went to the U.S. Supreme Court. Those are considered the church and state case. This would not be considered a church and state case. Supposedly, this case is just about whether the FDA uh, properly vetted, properly tested and came to the conclusions, uh, used the right data uh, for this, this, this when they made the, uh, I'm going to say the name wrong, Mephipristone. You the medical it, abortion yeah, drug. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's supposedly what the case is all about. But I mean, you know, people have a right to their opinions and notice the the uh, you know the religious and political composition of the Supreme Court. You know, some people say, you know, I'm always analyzing things legally, and some people say to me, you know, you have such a legal sort of you know correct or not correct legally analysis, um, and then all of a sudden, you know, I mean, how often do you think judges rule against stuff that they really believe in? You know, how how much of it is judges basically voting what the judge wants philosophically and politically. But, you know, it, number one, it, it's just corrosive to take that attitude. Uh, and secondly, as a trial attorney, which is basically what I am, someone who goes into the courts, you know, I used to say this in law school. If you thought there was an 80 percent chance that this judge was going to vote against you, no matter what you said, you still got to give your best argument because there's a 20 percent chance that it's going to matter. Yeah, they're well put. Uh, it's interesting that there is more, you can even uh, keep that picture of the court up there, because there is more of a drumbeat for Sotomayor perhaps stepping away and retiring and for her replacement then to be uh, a more liberal leaning or, you know, a, a, at least at, at, at worst, a centrist uh, justice. Um, and and in, increasingly, the legal punditry is talking in those terms. Now, she's only 69 years old. I mean, she's not, you know, uh, she's way younger than the presidential candidates. Um, but I wonder if you could speak to the 3D chess of when a justice steps away. Well, they do have a, a majority in the Senate. You know, they, they need uh, people like Manchin and... Uh, the one from Arizona. Uh, but there's no reason to think that, you know, they couldn't bring the nomination to the floor. It's not like when McConnell controlled the Senate and they would never bring uh, Merrick Garland uh, even up for a vote. So they could certainly bring their candidate up for a vote. And, you know, 51 or 52 senators are, I, I, what did Kavanaugh get, 51 or 52, something right. like that? He, it was thin. I, I don't know if that number is exactly right, but it was, it was a thin majority. But you know, with with a majority in the Senate, you know, they can't filibuster that. That's become the, the, the new rule. And so that you can do it with a majority, put someone on the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, I don't know. I mean, to me, Sotomayor is uh, in a totally different situation from RBG. I don't know all about her health, but it was well known that RBG had all of these health problems. And, you know, I got to meet her. I told you the story already, Mark. I told your viewers that I had the honor to... Uh, interview with her when she was still a professor at Columbia Law School. This would have been to be her law clerk on the appellate court, not on the U.S. Supreme Court. And I got to meet her. It was lovely. I've only disagreed, as I said before, with two decisions RBG ever made in her life, not to step down under Obama and not to hire me as her law clerk for the appellate court. Um, so, you know, I, I loved her. I admired her, um, but she stayed a little too long. But I, I just don't see it with Sotomayor. You know, let's 
let's rally and win this election. It's Trump, for God's sake. It's either going to be Trump or the other guy. Let's vote for the other guy. You know, uh, yeah. look at the economy. Look at how things are going. Look at, you know, build back America. Look at the just at so many different things. And, you know, people want to pick apart, you know, the border. They want to pick apart this, this and that and the other thing. Ask yourself, you know, the stock market is up. People are employed. Inflation's uh, coming down. Yes, it was high, right? Um, but you look at all of those kinds of things and you're, you're, you're going to put Trump in there. I mean, we've had four years of him already. Does anyone have a good memory? Think back. Think back to what it was like, you know. Um, so I think I that they're going to have... be reelected. I think that Biden's going to be reelected and then we don't have to think about who's going to be on the U.S. Supreme Court. In place well, and I mean, you could court. you could have a Biden uh, reelection and you could uh, lose the Senate, which I think is very possible. I mean, I, I was trying to get Rothman to weigh in on that, but I, I think it's very possible that Democrats lose the Senate, even as Biden wins the uh, wins the presidency. That said, um, uh, you, you know, you still have Sotomayor is only 69 years old. I mean, I, I don't know, but she there is a push for her to retire. I want to ask you about this. I saw it in the chat and I thought it was worth um, uh, visiting. Phineas says, uh, Mark, ask attorney Katz about the Florida documents case and how Judge Cannon uh, has Smith in a bad spot in an illegal quagmire. Can you speak to the documents, espionage case, the, all the documents jacked by the former president taken to these various properties? Well, we talked about the fact that uh, Jack Smith had a choice to make, whether to bring that case in Washington, D.C., federal court, or to bring it down in the Southern District of Florida. Uh, he decided to bring it down there knowing that he won had a one in three chance of getting Cannon, and he got Cannon. Uh, the reason I thought he should have brought it in Washington, D.C. was because there was clearly venue there. I've dealt with a lot of these cases. I've tried to move for change of venue as a federal criminal defense attorney. I've managed to do it a couple of times, but the law is that it's totally up to the trial judge and it's the trial judge that you pick. So the federal government, Jack Smith, would have gotten to pick DC. The only way the case would have been moved to Florida would have been if the judge who got it in Washington DC said, oh my goodness, I don't really think the venue is as appropriate here as it would be down there. That's very, very unlikely to happen. And if it doesn't happen, as I say, the precedents are that you can't appeal it successfully. So it would have so likely have stayed in Washington, D.C. He took the documents from Washington, D.C. He got subpoenas to give them back from Washington, D.C. He knew he was obstructing justice by not giving them back in Washington, D.C. And I've always used the example, if he'd have gone to Paris, what, there was no jurisdiction in Washington, D.C. because he'd taken the documents to Paris, you would have had to try the case in Paris, France. That's an absurdity. And I thought it was an absurdity here. Now, you know, in Jack Smith's defense, you can say, well, there were two other people that he thought were essential because his theory was that Trump did a lot of that um, machinations and obstructions through other people. And uh, they might have moved to change venue. I don't think that would have mattered either, because if venue is right for one person, generally the law is that it becomes right for the co-defendant. So the co-defendants would have lost. But the situation he's in now, everybody, everybody can see what it is. Unless she does something glaring that would get the appellate court to not only uh, reverse her, but remove her and order that a different district judge be put on this case. And so it looks like she knows that. And so she's not going to do anything. At some point, they could just say she's she's stalling. But they've, she's got to do something that makes it obvious that she's stalling. There are some issues in the case. So I just don't think he's going to get to trial. I don't think there's before the election. I don't think there's very much he can do about it. And the scary thing is that if Trump wins, of course, he'll order his attorney general not to pursue that case or the Washington, D.C. case any further. I'm still hoping the Washington, D.C. case goes to trial because April 22nd or whatever it is, the US Supreme Court hears presidential immunity. There's no there there to presidential immunity. In this case, that would block the trial. So I think the Supreme Court's ruling in late May or in June will be the trial can go ahead. I think the district judge is ready to go. I think she's gonna tell the lawyers be ready to go. And so I'm hoping that there's going to be a trial in, in uh, late summer, early fall. Uh, early fall is probably more likely, but before the election. That trial will start and streamline. There's only one defendant. It could actually go to a verdict before the November 5th election market really could. Well, I have learned that there are more ways to delay a trial <laughs> and to delay a final judgment than I ever thought possible. I, as we've all become educated on the law through you and just in the general zeitgeist now, wow, 
Delay tactics abound. Uh, David, thank you for your time. We look forward to catching you between now and uh, next time on London Radio, on New York TV. You're all over the place. I mean, you're on television really more than uh, more than most of game show hosts who are, uh, you know, I, I just see you everywhere. And you're always great. You always bring it, man. Thanks a lot well, for being great. here. It's great to be with you, and I hope people will remember. Usually it's Thursday at noon. This was great. You accommodated me today, but usually it's Thursday at noon. Yeah, we did surprise week. the audience. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, we, we, we moved David today because to accommodate his schedule. Good stuff, David Katz. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful Katz, to be with you. Take care. Yeah, see you. The Mark Thompson Show. All right. Wow. We got some cats in. Yeah, on a, on a different day. Oops. But uh, Why am there's I some legal on news Thompson that. Show? Yeah, it's a very. Um, I hope all the levels are good today, Albert. It feels like everything's a little bit off. I don't know if there's a way that you can. Kim feels a little low. You felt. Uh -oh. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to. Uh, you know, it's a really important day, Albert, because of. Now, I can't believe it! Mark's, madness. Mark's madness. Let's do it, everybody. Come on. If you haven't been part of it, you got to get into it. All you have to do is vote for one of these two, either- Seriously, what the f Either that or- There's never been anything like this. Oh, that's right, vote for- There's never been anything like this. Or- Seriously, what the f You can vote till the end of the show, live, and then you can vote in the community section of our YouTube channel till midnight, good luck! Wow, I'm really excited, Albert. There is stuff going down in Mark's Madness that I never could have anticipated. Closer contest than I ever would have thought possible. It is absolutely amazing. I'm trying to look ahead. What's on the docket for tomorrow, Albert? Yeah, let me take a look here. The commission really is here, like everyone, you. after a... Uh... Yeah, we were... Um, Albert, thank you. Yeah. Just started the Sweet 16 this week. I know that for sure. Yeah, um, we are in the Sweet 16. And tomorrow this brings have, some of your favorites up against each other. What is a, What are we looking at tomorrow, Albert? Yeah, we have 30 to 35% idiots tomorrow. Oh. Now, there's always been in this country 30 to 35% idiots. Okay, so that Probably goes up against... That favorite. was an upset. We didn't think that would get past the first round. Yeah, so, it got past Grady's situation, which yeah. was a seven seed. So that 30-35% uh, idiots was a... What he's got six. going here is a situation. Yeah, that lost to idiots. Okay, so idiots goes up against what tomorrow? Uh, my favorite drop, Oprah. My bad, I'm sorry. Mm. Oh, that's, that's not that's Oprah. Whoopi. That's, that's Whoopi. Whoopi. That's yeah, Whoopi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My I'm bad. bad, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that is. Uh, I think that could be the underdog to take the whole thing. Mm -hmm. my, you know, but I still, I don't know. The, what? I don't know. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> sorry, Oprah. I, I do think. Anyway, that's tomorrow. Yeah. Right now, again, you're voting for... There's never been anything like this. Or you're voting for... Seriously, what the f***? So it's one of those two. And only one of those will go on to the next round. Again, the drop's not going away. It just, the one that loses, isn't making it to the next round in the tournament. In Mark's Madness. Uh, do you and have a... Tomorrow, count the Sweet 16 will be concluded. And we'll have our Elite Eight starting on Friday. Oh. The Elite Eight starts Elite Friday. Eight. Wow. The Mark Thompson Show, the Mark Thompson Show, says S. Jones. Big shout out. Big shout out. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, all right. So I think some Kim news. I've got so much stuff to get to. Oh, mm. my God. I really do. I, 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 I have so much stuff to get to. What kind of and stuff? I'm, well, I, you news? know what? I'm done with politics. Okay. And Belinda would normally join us today for It's the Planet, yeah. Stupid. But we're not going to... We have a couple of pictures, I think, and maybe a video message from her. Yeah. But um, I... And I'll have a story or two about the planet. But then I have a kind of bizarre story out of a... Um, out of an apartment complex in New York that is worth, it involves a dog. Okay. And uh, it it's worth a listen. It won't take long and you must hear it. So uh, tomorrow we have, um, 
the author of a book called Swords of the Vatican. Oh. It's going to be pretty intriguing. And tomorrow also, the book about Mad Magazine. Mad Magazine was a cultural cornerstone of the, I don't know when it started. I'll have to you know, ask Mark Arnold about that, but he comes mm -hmm. through tomorrow. So we've got really kind of a fun show in addition to all the regular stuff. And tomorrow, I think, if we can get it organized, we'll have Richard Green, the civics dean, talking about mm -hmm. the third party and talking about, in this case, the RFK Jr. vice presidential choice. He knows her personally, and he has stuff to say about her and tough to stuff to say about the third party. So we'll do that tomorrow. Smash the like button Smash like a boss, if you would. With your iron rod. Give us a thumbs up. We are a completely crowd-funded show. Aside from a couple of small sponsors, really, the show doesn't exist without you. Thanks to all of you who have thrown in on Patreon, on PayPal, and even here on YouTube with the Super Stickers, Super Chats. It really does make a difference. I mean, honestly, without you guys, we don't have a show. There's just no way to continue. So thank you. Uh, and I'll recognize tomorrow some new Patreon members. And also, um, we'll give the shout out as we do at the end of every show. We list all of the people who are PayPal and Patreon uh, subscribers, members, however you want to call it, supporters, I would, would be the word I would use. Because you guys, you know, you're the straw that stirs the drink. We would not be here without you. And so we post you there. And Tony updates it at the end of every month. So if you don't see your name there now and you joined this month and you joined this community of subscribers or of supporters, uh, you will see it uh, next month. And if you don't, email us and I will make sure that it does get there. All right. Without any further delay. Mm -hmm. Although I do love delaying. It's one of my favorite things to do is delaying. Chit, chit, chit. Chit, chit, chit. Uh, Kim's <laughs> News. Uh, and we continue. Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister, and this report sponsored by Tenuta Vineyards in beautiful Livermore. Back to this horrible accident that happened in Baltimore. They're now identifying, or partially at least, the folks who did not survive this. One, a father of three from El Salvador, has been identified as one of the missing, uh, as has a father of two from Honduras, both of whom had lived in the United States for almost 20 years. Two Guatemalans, also among those unaccounted for, um, and some of those missing are of Mexican descent as well, or Mexican nationals, actually. The divers are continuing with recovery efforts today. That collapse is stopping the flow of ships in and out of Baltimore. And Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is saying that rebuilding this bridge isn't going to be quick and it's not going to be easy. He said there are dozens of containers with hazardous materials that remain um, on that ship that crashed into the bridge, but he said they don't pose any uh, danger to the public. There are three men convicted of killing Ahmad Arbery in Georgia in 2020, and they are making an appeals court appearance asking for their hate crime convictions to be overturned. Attorneys for Greg Michael, Travis McMichael, uh, Greg McMichael, rather, Travis McMichael and Roddy Bryan argue evidence of past racial behavior does not prove racial motivation in Arbery's death. Arbery was killed while running through a neighborhood after the three men chased him down and shot him, thinking he was a burglar. These guys are human garbage, and I hope <laughs> they never see the light of day again. Can you imagine, I mean, trying to get your hate crime overturned, saying that because I was racist in the past doesn't mean I hate people? Oh. These are grotesque, right. despicable people who should never see the light of day again. There's a house seat. It's flipping from red to blue. Democrat Marilyn Lands beat Republican Teddy Powell in a special election for the Alabama District uh, 10 House seat, which includes the Huntsville area. Lands won by a margin more than 60 to 40 percent. So again, flipping a House seat from red now to blue with Democrat Marilyn Lands. That's the right way to flip it. So we'll take it. Take every seat we can get. The NCAA lobbying states to ban prop betting on individual college student athletes. Prop betting involves wagers on individual statistics like yards passed or uh, in football or points scored in basketball. NCAA officials said this is meant to prevent potential cheating and stop players, young players, from getting harassed. 
There's somebody in or around New Jersey with a lottery ticket worth more than a billion dollars. Lottery officials say ticket a ticket sold in New Jersey matched all six numbers in Tuesday night's drawing. The next drawing for Friday night, the jackpot is down to a measly $20 million. Who wants it? Who cares? Uh, tonight's Powerball is at, I think, $850 million? So that's that's the next big one. Well, if you can't be at Billy Joel's 100th Madison Square Garden show tomorrow, you can watch it on TV in just a few weeks. CBS is airing the performance April 14th. Joel announced his decade-long career, uh, decade-long Madison Square Garden residency will continue or and then conclude this summer. And this report is sponsored by Tenuta Winery in Livermore. If you simply say, smash it with your iron rod after you've Mm. filled your online cart up with a bunch of great wine, then you get the 10% off. I I still don't understand quite how this works, which is an Mm. awkward thing to say with a sponsor. But I, you're saying you fill your online cart and then you say, spill it. um, Here's how I would do it. How would you do it, Kim? I would fill my online cart. Yes. And okay. then, Kim, how are you? Yeah. If I didn't see the ten percent off come off th- right at the time of purchase, then I would call Rich out at Tenuta Vineyard at nine two five six nine nine forty five seventy six, and over the phone I would say, "Hey, Rich, smash Here's it with your iron cart. rod." Uh huh. Yeah. And he's going to okay. give so you the ten percent off. You almost have to rod. call because there's just no way. So you're I saying fill it. your cart. So you know what you're, go to the website, fill your cart so you know what you want. Then call them and give them the phrase that pays. Give them the what's what. With your iron rod. And then he'll give you the 10% off. And then he gives you the 10% off. And then the wine comes to your house. And then it's a good day for everyone because you've got your Mark Thompson. Why are you yelling red? Ready to to, um, air, get a little oxygen in there. Pour into the beautiful big goblet wine glass and sip in the evening. Mm. Wow. Yeah. You've really got a narrative going. I really enjoy that. I do. Rich at tenutavineyard.com. It's T E N U T A. Look how pretty that winery is. T E N U T A. Yeah. Smash it with your iron rod. Phone number again, 925 699 4576. It's a great day for wine. I'm Kim McCallum. It really is something special. (laughs) Yeah, because you're, you're right, something Kim. special, Mark. This is why. <laughs> I'm Kim McAllister. This is the Mark Thompson. Show. The Mark Thompson Show. Morning. Mash it with your iron rod. Who's Mark Thompson? Hey, which one do you use, Mark Thompson? What he's got going here is a situation. Seriously, what the f- is unbelievably offensive? There's Pull never been pants, anything banana. like this. Pull up those pants. Ralph Dater just sent me a book. Did he send you one too? I offer this sincere apology to you today. Everything is going extremely well. Call me a liar. Know what you call me? You, sir, are a liar. You are a cover-up artist and you are a liar. Why a liar? Your pants are on fire! Told me. Can you let him finish, sir? It was wrong, it was stupid, and I'm trying to be a better person. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you what I think. What are the porn stars doing? Do you have a secret now? Isn't anybody been a weed? It's 100% effective. How about that? Say what? There is no defense for my conduct. I misspoke. I stand corrected. And I wanted to apologize to the Asian community, the Asian American community. (laughs) Time's up, mother effers. Right on. I'm loving it. I've got my Bible on the way, and I'm feeling good. This every- is a word from the Lord, and he's I not happy. I am excited. There's, There's never, never been, been anything, anything like, like this. No. We are in the middle of uh, one of my favorite times of year. I mean, I guess the Christmas season is pretty cool. I don't want to discount that. You know, 
feelings of, uh, you know, of a special warmth and joy that comes with the holidays. That 4th of July is pretty cool. It's celebratory. You know, it's summer. That's pretty great, too. New Year's Eve is good, you know, because you have the promise of the new year and it's always celebratory as well. My birthday is pretty strong. It's the day after Christmas. So Mm. come to think of it, there are some other (laughs) competing areas of the calendar. But maybe my favorite, I'm going to say it, it is my favorite. It's right now. Now, I can't believe it. Mark's Madness. Madness. Damn straight. Come on, Kamish, let's rock this. Big one going down in Mark's Madness. This brings in two favorites. It's either... There's never been anything like this. Yeah, or... Seriously, what the f***? You vote for... Seriously, what the f***? Or you vote for... There's never been anything like this. Only one can go on to the next round. Vote until midnight tonight in the community section of our YouTube channel or right now in the chat. Wow. What is it looking like, Kamish? Do you have a... um? You have it's not a, looking uh, good for Trump here again. Oh, in the polls, oh. Though, yeah. well, that's um, you know yeah. he's he's taking a lot of heat, you know, and he's this is just one more thing to add to uh, his 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 plate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. To hear Don't that. talk to me that way. Well, I'm just saying <laughs> that's uh, it. Can be that way. It can be awfully tough. Um, there's something going down in New York City that I thought just jumped out at me, and I had to share it with you. <laughs> The Mark Thompson Show. Uh, there's a dog in a Manhattan building that has become this highly controversial creature. It's a really nice neighborhood. It's the Upper West Side, which is a really super dreamy part of New York City. And there are two-bedroom units there for upwards of 6000 a month, and there uh, is a really nice life in this um, building, which, as I say, has a primo location. But apparently there is a lawsuit now that has been filed by a tenant who was attacked by an emotional support dog Uh that is oftentimes occupying the lobby or the elevator. The emotional support dog, so says the lawsuit, attacked this uh, tenant, the emotional support dog is named Sam and Sam was involved apparently according to the lawsuit again in roughly a dozen altercations there at the building now there is no picture of Sam I've looked otherwise I'd be showing you a picture of Sam right now but the dog uh, no once... picture of um ma- what's uh, Joe Biden's dog jo- major major, <laughs> Biden. major oh. you could show me yeah. <laughs> poor major all that activity in the White House, I mean, it was just the wrong yeah. dog for that situation. But anyway, apparently this dog, Sam, rushed at a delivery worker in the elevator um, and lunged at somebody else who was waiting for a bus just outside the building, attacked a doorman in the elevator. I mean, this is all in the lawsuit that is blaming poor Sam for all of these acts, but also blaming what? The uh, uh, Sam's guardians or owners, however you want to say it, you know, the people who Sam uh, is uh, belonging to. Hate to say that because it makes it sound like objects, but you understand. Um, the suit does name them for failing to take preventive action and for refusing to give up the dog or move out of the building. Mm. It also claims that the building's owner and management company, both named as defendants, were aware of the dog's aggressive behavior but failed to stop it or to notify tenants. Now, suing over dog attacks in buildings is not unusual, and suing over dog attacks generally, as you know, is very common. There are almost 20,000 different uh, dog bite liability claims last year. But this is a little different because the plaintiff is this uh, television news producer who survived six months of Um, bomb sweeping because he went to Afghanistan and was embedded with a military unit there in Afghanistan. So he's being represented by a personal injury and civil rights lawyer in New York. That same lawyer who represented Michael Cohen 
So you see in, you know, in this case, there what? is some high end stuff going on. Exactly. After Sam attacked another neighbor two winters ago, the suit again step, stipulates that the uh, uh, owners of Sam asked the landlord specifically not to uh, tell uh, the landlord. So uh, the Sam was a secret? So, so in other words, um, it's being suggested that Sam had a history of aggressive activity and that the Again, I'll use the word, the guardians of Sam mm -hmm. had approached the person who was the victim of the aggressive activity once before mm -hmm. last year and said, please don't mention this to the landlord because, Sam, yeah. because uh, you know, we're worried. Right. So this continues. And, you know, again, this is becoming a, a serious issue. And they're looking at actually maybe being expelled from this, uh, this building because of Sam. They want financial d damages for pain and suffering. And they say that Sam's owners slandered and defamed them by telling neighbors that nothing actually happened and that this guy is sort of making this up and that this is a way for the guy to get money from us. So he's saying that's defamatory because it's a lie. That's not what happened. Apparently 911 was called and when officers responded... Sam's guardians did finally apologize, but by then it had been, you know, too long and too late, and this has been a repeated problem, and there is tape, you know, there is recording to back up a lot of the claims of these plaintiffs in this case. What kind of dog is Sam? Sam is a mix, as I recall. Let me just look. It's a, it's a mix, a... Um, uh, an emotional support dog effectively terrorizing the building, let me see, is a mixed breed rescue dog, is all they say. Uh, yeah. They, they, I'm, they, I'm kind of reminded of that case out of San Francisco. Do you remember the Diane Whipple case? Where she, she was really hurt. Hello, are you there? Oh, I think Kim might have dropped out. Oh. I remember that case. That woman was really damaged by the dog, as I recall. Maybe you can Google it, uh, Albert. Yeah, I, I, that's my recollection, though. Google it. Yeah. Well, Kim, I think. I think she Kim... back. You dropped out. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry about that. It was a what? Presa Canario dog, and she was killed. She died. Oh wow! So there you go. Yeah, yeah, but the um, the defendants in the case it was Marjorie Noller and at that time her husband, I forget his name, but they were accused of knowing that they had this dog, this dangerous attack dog, ignoring all the signs, looking the other way, just like you say, these people are like, shh, don't tell them, don't tell our landlord that this, right? You know, it just, it's so you know these things happen and you make excuses and you don't do anything. And then, you know, something horrible happens and something, someone's really injured and you're in real trouble. Those people went away to jail. This is, and she lost her life in that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this is a situation that maybe is not much different in the sense that the aggression of the animal within this environment, you know, it's mm -hmm. really, you know, not the animal's fault, right? Um, the aggression is demonstrated by more and more people coming forward. So they've, you know, they've subpoenaed people, they've canvassed the apartment building, and now a lot of people have stories. So, um, and... There is now a muzzle requirement for dogs in the building. And uh, even though there is a muzzle requirement, it is largely unenforced. So, you know, that's the latest there. It was a bizarre story. And it's, you know, how life in a bougie apartment building in New York can, uh, can turn ugly, you know, all based on an incident. As it turns out, an incident was followed by many more incidents in the in the same building. So. The Mark Thompson Show. I am uh, uh, wanting. I don't know who I have to uh, ask around here. How is my Truth Social stock doing, Albert? I mean, it's a simple thing to ask you to check on. Google it. How my DJT is the uh, symbol on the Nasdaq. And uh, there's never been anything like it. From what there's I'm, never been anything like it this. It took off like crazy yesterday, and I want to make sure it's still doing well. The other big stock I'm I'm big into uh, may pull my 
Truth Social stock and move it into Krispy Kreme. Krispy <laughs> Kreme's doing well, too. I don't know if you saw that, Albert. But uh, those are the two big winners. Krispy Kreme up 39.4%. It announced a deal in which McDonald's restaurant, McDonald's restaurants are going to sell Krispy Kreme donuts is what's happening. What? Yeah, it's really so, convenient when you can get your heart attack all in one spot. I love it. It's America and damn it, you know. If you if you don't like it, maybe you should think about it. Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? Exactly. Maybe go over to some communist party. You guys won't have your Krispy Kreme or your McDonald's, but you'll have you won't have heart attacks. Big deal. So anyway, how is my Truth Social doing, Albert? I'm. I think it's up sixteen percent. Let me um, see the numbers for you here. All right, it's sixty six twenty two currently. Says John. Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting for the stock Market to taxes. Seven point eight five million. Yeah. Billion. Just sorry. Sorry. Look at the look, look at the little graph, Albert. What does the little graph say about my um, about my DJT, my uh, Donald Trump Truth Social? It's now trading under DJT. Yeah. Well, I guess we can check it afterward. Uh, They're calling it a meme stock, though, on this uh, on Axios. Mm, I see. Yeah. DJT. Sorry, it keeps on disappearing. Yep. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, I'm watching it, Albert, and I think you should be too, because if uh, you know, this could bail us out from the show, Mark. Possibly. <laughs> I mean, this could be what we need. Uh, Kim, that heart attack comment was hilarious. Says the oh. Dodge guy. It yeah, was. Well. It was hilarious. Yeah. We do have a video yeah. from usually on on uh, Wednesdays. We do have we do talk to Belinda. Yeah. For it's the planet stupid. Do we have a video? Yeah. I have the um, video lined up for if you want me to play that. Yeah. Can you play the uh, open and close? I mean, how, how should we do that, Albert? What do you think? Don't play the open because she's not here. Just play the video. Is that what yeah, you're... Yeah, you can just play the video. Okay, go ahead. This is from Belinda, our host okay. for It's a Planet what Stupid. What makes Sedona so spectacular? Okay, and then got to apologize. I can't bump up the audio, so uh, just turn up your audio and then turn us back down after the video. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ta -da. So this is... 15 million years worth of sea level rise and then dropping back down, depositing limestone. And then for the last 5 million years, the limestone has been weathered by the wind and the rain. And the rain has interacted with the ferrous component of the rocks, the iron, and created rust. Hence the fantastic rust color that you get. Uh, so drink it up. It's the planet. You're welcome. <laughs> that's so pretty oh my yeah. god what a great trip they have this camper this small camper i'm speaking softly because i know maybe you had to turn up your <laughs> device to hear that i don't want to blow you out but they have a camper that is solar powered i think it's kind of oh. cool it's okay. a small thing but they have one and and she likes it she swears by it so um very, very cool. Next Wednesday, she'll be back. Again, thanks to David Katz for being here today. He normally would be here tomorrow, but David Katz is on a trip. I think he has to travel tomorrow, and so as a result, he wouldn't uh, be available. And so he said, I'll do it today. So that's where we had David Katz. And tomorrow, as I say, we in the works, we have RFK Jr.'s third-party effort x-rayed by uh, Richard Green, the civics dean, who also has a, an experience with RFK's running mate now, the uh, specific running mate that has now been chosen by RFK Jr., and we'll talk to him about that, along with the author of Swords of the Vatican and the author of a new book on Mad Magazine and the history of Mad Magazine. So there's a lot going on. That's tomorrow. Now, last check of what's going on in Mark's Madness. Now, I can't believe it! Mark's Madness. You're going to vote for either uh, the former president. There's never been anything like this. Or it's... Um, Seriously, what the f***? Yeah. Again, this is the That'll only be in the community tab now. I just ended the live vote. Here are the results. Yeah, you'll seriously WTF and then never been anything following. So seriously, what the F has up 63 percent and there's uh, never been anything like this. 36 percent vote in the community tab of our YouTube channel. Reward. I'm excited about the possibility, Albert, that um, 
We're going to move into the Elite Eight. And then it's a real throwdown. It's going to be like choosing between children, the Elite Eight, Albert. And yet we have yeah, to do it. There's still someone in this show who has a drop still alive, and that's Kim's Chit 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 is still. Oh, that, yeah. Still Absolutely. Going chit, chit Chit Chit, I think, may win the whole thing. Wow. I think a lot of people agree with you, Mark. Yeah. I don't know. You got Oprah's what? Yeah, well, that's definitely going to be the, the big show. Maureen says, Maureen says, hello, Mark. Your new lighting is so much better. And the absence of those bulky headphones is fabulous, too. Keep up the great work. I love your show. Thank you, Maureen. And uh, big shout out to you. Big shout out. I um, need an extension on this because I can't move much with these things. But I uh, do agree. It's nice to not have to the bulky headphones. That's uh, definitely. I still have my bulky headphones. Well, there was actually talk that the bulky headphones are kind of the thing. Like when you do a podcast now, everybody wears the bulky headphones. It's almost like the uniform sure. of doing a, a, a so the So all I'm saying is don't feel bad about having the bulky headphones. It might actually be the, you know, it's kind of a cool, right. okay. yeah, cool brag. So um, anyway, um, now... Albert, do you have anything else to share with us? I mean, I know we've learned a lot about each other, but uh, I know one thing didn't happen today. Can you guess what it would be? Can you guess the one thing that should have happened today from you that didn't happen? Maybe the tweet? The tweet? Yes, the tweet is exactly <laughs> right. Maybe we'll post the tweet up there. Watch a the post-show tweet from Albert. He's just Albert, thank you. Play. Getting back into it. So, uh, all right, well, I... I'm Shadow Stevens for the Mark Johnson Show. Bye-bye. Until tomorrow. Oh, After Party Live okay. going down bye right bye. now. Until tomorrow. Thanks, everybody, for all the ways you support us. Bye-bye.